Assalamu alaikum everyone, so welcome to another video and in this video we'll be talking about the introverted personality. A little bit to know about the introvert personality, I'm sure some of you already know what an introvert is, but just to explain a little bit more, the introvert is the kind of individual that they still socialize, okay, not that they have problems with social skills, they socialize but they like to have more of smaller groups to socialize with smaller groups and build close connections with those small groups. They don't like to be the center of attention, um, they don't like to, for example, to speak, you know, publicly in front of a large group of individuals, um, unless they know exactly what they are talking about in the sense that there is a topic of their area of expertise or for example related to their job that they know really well and they'll be happy and they'll be okay talking about it. But in, in, in general, they tend to kind of, you know, avoid being the center of attention, um, like connections with smaller groups of individuals. If they do socialize, they need time to recharge. So some of the characteristics of the intro, introvert personality as a child, as, a, as an, a, an adult, you know, um, any individual, they're very good listeners, right? So what they do is that if we ask them questions, they need time to, to think and reflect and then think about their answer. So they're very good listeners. You can talk to them for so long and they'll be listening to you really well. Now, if we ask them a question as parents, as you know, friends, as teachers, we need to give them the chance to think about their answer before answering it. Because for them, reflection and focusing is very important. Before speaking, they need to think. A little tip here if we have teachers listening. Now, if you're in a classroom and you ask a question, what you'll notice is that perhaps in every class the same um, students put their hands up and that tends to be the extroverts. If we ask a question, the extrovert doesn't need to think about the answer. They'll just put their hands up straight away whether they know the answer or not. Introverts will not do this unless they know the answer. So if they don't know the answer, they need time to think. Now they can be criticized for not participating in class. They can be seen as lacking communication skills and that's not the case with them. All they need is that they need time to think. So it can be quite unfair if we ask a question and then only give the opportunity to extroverts to answer the questions because they put their hands up. It can also be unfair if we put the introvert on the spot if they're not ready to do so because they haven't thought of the answer. And then we might, you know, accuse them for being lazy, not knowing the work, not doing it and so on. So it can lead to, you know, some problems there. How do we make it fair for them? Now, the way we make it fair for them in a classroom, what we can do is give each child two cards, one green card, one red card. OK, if it's question time, answer for a question and time, um, question and answer time, for example, we'll give those cards to each individual. You've got the green card and you've got the red card. What you tell them is that when I ask a question, each one of you will put their hands up. But you will put either the green card if you're ready for an answer or you put the red card out if you are needing a little bit of time to answer the question. So that way we're making it fair for everybody. Everybody's feeling, okay, you know, I'm actually participating. I can participate in the class. I'm not, you know, I'm not feeling left behind and so on. So it's making it fair. It's making the introverts feel that they are part of the classroom and they can participate. So again, what they need to do is, I, is everybody have to put their hands up, but they choose the green or the red. The green means I'm ready to answer the question now. Red means I need a little bit of time to think. That way it makes it fair for everyone. So that's why one way of helping the introverts to participate in class and helping them to um, to feel that they're not being criticized for having lack of communication skills and so on. The introvert is also more inclined to privacy. They like to be more private. They may not like to socialize all the time. So um, it's important that we don't push them to socialize if they're not ready. That doesn't mean that if they have problems socializing with everybody, that, that that's something that quite different we need to work on in, in a different way but they as I mentioned earlier they tend to kind of like to socialize with smaller num smaller groups um, and they like to build quite good connections with them so if for example as a family we decide to go out for a big gathering and the introverted child is part of that they might get to a stage where like, they will be like okay you know what I, I really need to go home now I, I cannot do this it's very important that we don't push them to stay in social gathering that they're not com feeling comfortable with. Because social interaction with an introvert means draining of the energy, right? Extrovert is the other way around. They gain energy that they recharge by social connection. So it's very important for us to kind of give them space to be by themselves and to recharge. Uh, another example is, for example, if we have a child who's extrovert and a child who's an introvert who are picking up from school, for example, as a parent. So we might ask the children, oh, how was your day? The extroverts will go on and on and on about their day. The introvert might just say, oh, it's fine. 
and they don't want to speak anymore. Now, what happened to them is that they had a full day of socializing and, you know, social interactions, talking to people, listening to people, talking all the time. All they need to do now is just to stay quiet, to recharge because they dra- their energy is drained by now. So they will not be able to answer questions. They, they might ask very briefly if you really push them by asking them questions. The best thing is to give them time. When they go home, maybe they would want to sleep, they would want to rest, they just want to be by themselves a little bit. That's very important for them to recharge and when they're ready, they can come and have a conversation with yourself. That also goes to, you know, to couples, for example. If, for example, the husband is the introvert and the wife is the extrovert, the husband had a long day at work, he comes home, he just wants to stay quiet, doesn't want to talk, wants to recharge. The wife might try to start a conversation with him and he just cannot, does not have the energy. He The, the energy is completely drained. So... The wife might think that, okay, there's something wrong with our marriage, why is he not talking to me, and so on and so on. So all they need is just time to kind of recharge, and then they'll be able to have a conversation. That goes as well for the other way around. The the wife could be an introvert and the, the husband could be an extrovert. It's just about understanding that they do need that space to recharge. Um, they Also, the children who are introverts, when they are upset, if something happens, for example, they're angry, they need, um, they're not able to express themselves. They tend to withdraw. They'll go to the room, stay quiet, they will withdraw from the situation. As parents, you may think that they've dealt with it, but they haven't dealt with it. They don't know how to express their emotions openly. They don't need to, but they don't know how to express it um, uh, verbally as well. So they need time to go withdraw. And then when they come back, when they're ready, they will not be able to speak to you about what happened. You need to help them. You need to initiate the conversation with them because they will not be able to initiate the conversation. And if we don't deal with it, if we don't initiate that conversation, we don't deal with it, they're shutting down. So that's going to lead to further problems in the future. They shut down and it becomes more problematic. So we need to make sure that we give them the time if they need to withdraw when they come back, when they're ready, we help them to speak about it. And also they struggle to, in schools, for example, if we take them to a new school, for for instance, they were at a school and they changed school, they're not going to be able to make friends very easily. We need to help them. So, for example, we if we know somebody in the school who's an extrovert, we get that friend, or even an introvert, but who, who already built up some connections, we get that friend to help them make connections with people because it's not going to come out automatically. They need help to be able to build social connections. When we have conversations with an introvert as well, we need to focus on one topic at a time and try not to have too many people Um, you know, jumping from conversation to conversation. If there is a large group of people, focus on one or two topics at a time, not more than that, because what they do, what they need is that they need time to think, you know, when there is a topic. And if we jump from one topic to another, they haven't finished talking about the first topic before getting into the second topic. So it's quite important that we stick to one topic or two topics at a time and give them um, the time to think. And also quite something very important, do not ever complete their sentences, okay? If they're speaking, if they're ready to speak because they stay quiet, they think and then they speak. When they're ready to speak, if we complete their sentences, they lose their train of thoughts because they already thought about it very well. They know exactly what they wanna say. And then you cut them off and you complete the sentence it, 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 it really distracts them. So giving them the time to think, giving them the time to respond and do not complete their sentences because they've thought about what they want very well and they know exactly what they are saying. So the strength here about the introverts, just to recap, the strength are they're very good listeners, they're very focused. You know, they know exactly what they want. You might notice from your children, there's a child that knows exactly what they want, they want and they will get it because they're very focused. So these are great strengths that the introverts have and the, um, the challenges, I've already given some tips on how to deal with those challenges.